What's up guys, welcome back to another video. So we've all heard of this idea of having an alter ego. Some examples include Batman, Bruce Wayne, Peter Parker as Spider-Man. In more classic literature, you might have Edmond Dante as the Count of Monte Cristo, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, or as one of my favorites, the narrator as Tyler Durden in Fight Club. So who are these characters exactly? Well, first off, let's define what alter ego actually means. So this goes back to first century Rome by a man named Marcus Cicero. He was this Roman scholar, an academic skeptic. He was also a very successful politician. This guy was considered one of Rome's greatest orators and pro stylist. This guy was like basically the zaddy of Latin. So he comes up with the alter ego without it being called alter ego at the time as the second self, a trusted friend. So a few years ago, Beyonce does this uh, special on the Oprah Winfrey show. So she talks about her alter ego, Sasha Fierce, which is basically this more poised, like almost like stoic version of her that she kind of taps into prior to her performance on stage. It's kind of this character that I've, I've created over the years. Uh huh. And how is Sasha Fierce different than I am? Well, I know, you know, definitely wearing that bodysuit, I can never walk out here and do yes. that. Does Sasha Fierce ever go home? Like You also have Kobe Bryant, who, known as the Black Mamba, who would also tap into his character prior to his basketball games. How did you get your mindset into this alter ego to be comfortable being Black Mamba, like how, how did that happen? It's a good separation for me, you know, emotionally, to be able to put myself in a place where at practice or when I'm training or during games, I switch my mind to something else. I switch my mode into something else. And I was thinking about this and it's like any time we hear the word ego in a sentence, our, our minds automatically go to like this, um, like we assign like kind of like a negative meaning to that word. Ego is suffering, ego is attachment, ego prevents us from success. This is what modern day spirituality teaches us, which isn't a bad thing, but why is this something that we should pay attention to if we have people telling us to go against it? First, you need to understand the difference between your ego and having an alter ego. They might have similar characteristics, but the dividing line between the two is one is unconscious, the ego, and then the other one is more of a conscious effort your alter ego. So putting it simply, the ego is that voice in your head that is analyzing everything around you. It comments on your social interactions. Uh, it speculates about the future. It gives you worry. And so the alter ego in and of itself is objectively neutral. This doesn't take form until you prescribe it its own code of ethics. You give it a name. You identify with it in some way. This is the best analogy I could come up with, but just bear with me. So it functions similarly to Ash Ketchum's Pokeballs that each contain a specific Pokemon, right? Whenever Ash is confronted with some sort of obstacle, there's a challenge in front of him, he's gonna find another Pokemon master. He utilizes the Pokemon that is best equipped to handle what's in front of him. So pretend for a second that each Pokemon within Ash's possession is simply an extension of himself. So when he encounters a dangerous situation, an obstacle that he normally would not be able to overcome, he utilizes a part of himself, the Pokemon, to overcome that challenge. So then what is the secret? How does one create an alter ego? Well, Todd Herman, so the author of The Alter that's Ego that's Effect, he states that the way to create an alter ego is through creative imagination. It is a reinvention of self via creative imagination. Just take a moment and think back to when you were a kid and you had this ability to imagine things like you were a ninja turtle or you were a Disney princess. It's like you would just get into this character without any thought really. And it was play pretend, but you had this shift in mindset when you would have the outfit on or when it was playtime and you were allowed to behave as if you were someone else. No other being on this planet has the capacity for abstract thought like we do. You know, this creative imagination where we can suspend belief in our own abilities for a moment and step into this other version of ourselves. Herman states the process is like the back door to peak performance because it sidesteps doubt because you are not doing it. This is impossible. No, this is crazy. People do it every day. They talk to themselves, they see themselves as they'd like to be. They don't have the courage you have to just run with it. 
Naturally, you're still wrestling with it, so sometimes you're still you. We should do this again sometime. Other times, you imagine yourself watching me. If this is your first night at Fight Club, you have to fight. Little by little, you're just letting yourself become Tyler Durden. So to create an alter ego, there's three main questions I have to answer. The first is your intention. Why, why do you want an alter ego? Maybe you're wanting to increase your confidence in the dating world, you're back on the market. Maybe you're a struggling online creative that is just wrestling with this self-doubt. Maybe you're trying to steal the Declaration of Independence so you can sell it on the black market, flee the country, go under a different alias, but the real you would feel guilty about that, so you have to come up with a new persona. The second is gonna be forming an identity. This is the who. What is the demeanor of this alter ego? How do they behave? What are their beliefs? What is their temperament like, right? These are all questions you have to answer as you're building this. And then you can break this down into further specifics, like how do they talk? How do they handle themselves when conflict arises. So it's important to have a clear vision of this frame that you're creating because if you have gray areas, you're going to tend to default back to your instinctive personality. So the third thing is answering this question of implementation, which is the how. So what exactly does this alter ego do and how are they going to do it? Maybe they wake up at 7 a.m., they perform their morning routine and then immediately get to work in order to achieve X, Y, and Z goal. So lastly, you have the activation aspect of it, which is just a call to action, a mantra, a symbol that is associated with stepping into this new alter ego. This could be something as simple as putting on your glasses, your work uniform. You can also set alarms throughout the day. This is what I do to remind myself to step into these different modes. Whenever I wake up, I have an alarm that says morning monk. I also do this when I'm on a sales call, talking like, to potential like, clients, and then when I'm shopping at the grocery store. No, I'm just kidding, nobody needs an alter ego for the grocery store, that's ridiculous. All jokes aside though, just a little story here. When I first started experimenting with this, like back in 2019, I started going to this like volleyball court close to where I lived because I had like no friends and I was like, all right, I gotta make some friends. And this was like after my five year relationship ended. And so I would go to these like Friday night pickup games. It was just like open court. There was like a ton of people, probably like 50 or 60 people. And I literally would just tell myself over and over and over again, everybody wants to talk to me. Everybody wants to be my friend. Everybody wants to talk to me. Everybody wants to be my friend. And I would just say that. And as soon as my feet hit the sand, it's like, I just became this like, easygoing, laid back, charismatic guy that was encouraging people. The crazy thing about it too is like, I wasn't even good at volleyball, like I was still trash, but people were still wanting me to like be on their team and all these things. And there was even a point too where we, I, I was uh, like sitting out a game and there was like this lady that I had only seen like maybe once or twice, maybe like early mid thirties. And she came over and we started chatting on the bench and she was like, um, she started opening up to me about her engagement with like her fiance and apparently they had like all these really bad relationship problems like something was not right and here i was listening to this woman for like 30 minutes like during the entire course of this other game going on and i was just like damn um was i flattered by the fact that she felt like she could share these things with me and we could have a conversation about them absolutely should she have probably gone to therapy for it? Yeah, maybe, you know, but nonetheless, it was still a good self-esteem boost and also just reinforced this idea that like, this actually works. And that was like a breakthrough moment to me because if the natural Alden is this shy, introverted and quiet individual, then why don't he just become someone else? Why don't I tap into this other character in order to accomplish the goal of making friends, you know, stepping outside of that comfort zone. So but when this like kind of happened, that was just like a big shift for me because it made me realize like, man, my only limitations are the ones that I've placed on myself. And a way that I can get past that is just tapping it. It's like just believing that I have this in me, this other character to make friends. And so a closing words, an obstacle that you might encounter while formulating this alter ego is centered around this question of how well do you trust yourself? 
like how many of us feel unqualified we struggle with imposter syndrome we don't feel good enough we don't feel like we have what it takes to start the business to start the youtube channel and we go to the grave with these billion dollar ideas because we're too afraid of this internal fear or feeling like we lack having an alter ego does not make you any less of an authentic person as say lying to someone about your true state uh, as a means to impress or improvise for a lack. The things that have happened to you are not indicative of character deficiencies, right? These are events that have happened in your past that you've unconsciously interpreted as signs to modulate your creative imagination, which has thus hurt your courage or any ability that you have to become someone else. If you're weak, if you're not happy with who you are now, you have the power to change by tapping into a new identity. So that's all I got. I hope this video helps. Um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions and thank you so much for watching.